Right, so following on from the local elections and the news that Keir Starmer's Labour Party is in real terms only polling some 7% ahead of the Tory party right now, that is according to what is called the National Equivalent Vote, a poll taken from various extrapolations of local election data and used to give a projection rather than a prediction of a general election result. And these have certainly been indicative for decades ahead of a general election on how things may pan out in that election and they have tallied up a large national equivalent vote lee generally translates into a decent majority for whichever party is leading in the subsequent general election so as much as people can quibble that local election results do not predict general election results they can in fact be good indicators if read in the right way with starmer not having a large lead in this poll having in the region of half the lead he needs we're in hung parliament territory apparently which in my view given the prospects before us, is a rather good thing. But for all the reasons that Labour underperformed once again in these local elections, though, having failed to win more lost Tory votes than they gained to other parties, the one much of the media are fixating on is the matter of Israel and Gaza and Starmer's ongoing unequivocal support for the genocidalists. It's no wonder, therefore, that Starmer has earned himself the nickname Tel Aviv Keith, and it's no small wonder that is tr that is trending again on social media today as he promises to listen and take on board those lost votes and pledges to win them back. But given he cannot be trusted to ever keep his word and has shown no sign of criticising Israel and siding with Gaza, in fact going so far as to say sabotage parliamentary votes and having advocated that Israel has the right to commit war crimes even, how on earth does Keir Starmer think he can win these votes back acting and speaking on this atrocity in the way that he has for seven months now? Right, so Keir Starmer, a.k.a. Tel Aviv Keith, he has apparently been listening to us following so many lost votes in the local elections, following lost councils even as he saw on Oldham with independent and green candidates winning almost as many seats between them as Labour did, with one significant reason being the ongoing genocide in Gaza at the hands of Israel, a nation Labour and its leadership remain in unequivocal support of. The problem Starmer has is that for as much as damage in the public eyes he causes for himself and his party, it's almost impossible for him to reverse that. He has, on one hand, believed it didn't matter, and therefore, as far as policy announcements, or more often than not policy scrapping was concerned, having binned everything he told people he stood for, to now become a Blairite clone minus any other charisma, but even more Tory than they were, he has told the nation that he doesn't listen to us, doesn't listen to our wants, doesn't care about our needs, after 14 years of Tory misrule, because he didn't think he needed to. He was getting told he had these massive poll leads, no matter what Rishi Sunak tried, he wasn't gaining any ground, and it didn't seem to matter that Labour were offering barely anything different, because a change of face and simply not being the Tory party appeared to be all that was needed to carry Keir Starmer to number 10 come the general election, when Sunak finally finds a spine to call it and stops squatting mandateless in number 10 himself. The problem for Starmer, as it turns out, is that these polls appear to be woefully mistaken. For one, they've never taken into account at parliamentary level the inroads smaller parties are making. But the Dems look to be making a frankly inexplicable recovery. What do they ever stand for at all, after all? But so have the Green Party, now looking more and more in with a chance of gaining their second MP in Bristol. And there's been the rise in independent candidates being financed within their communities to be able to stand as local candidates on local issues. Something Starmer has caused additional and particular ire around the country over as he has parachuted favoured Starmeroid people in all over the place. To an extent, pollsters clearly underestimated that. We've seen entire constituency Labour Party executives collapse on multiple occasions because of the draconian diktat being handed down by the Labour leadership. The people even in the party are choosing to sit on their hands and let these authoritarians just own their mistakes. Even where parties might not have enough in them to necessarily take a parliamentary seat, though, they will be making inroads into Labour's vote. Remember that Starmer has been wooing that Tory vote for so long now, and when it came to these local election results, he took, roughly speaking, just two-fifths of it, all whilst losing support from his traditional support base, and there is no guarantee any of these Tory voters that might be lending Labour their vote now will do so again. A poll lead built on sand, and so it perhaps is no surprise that the national equivalent vote projection, not prediction, but projection, a snapshot basically, is giving Labour just a 7% lead over the Tories. Totally different methodology to what other pollsters 
are traditionally producing in their polls. But much more believable, given there's so little difference between Starmer's Labour and Sunak's Tories. People don't want this, yet Starmer has refused to offer anything different. I believe there needs to be a policy shift with Labour. I believe he needs to stop letting Rachel Reeves call all the policy shots because she's George Osborne in a skirt, ready to inflict more austerity on us given the chance, and nobody wants that again. But even doing that, would anyone believe Starmer, given how much he has lied to the public on so many things on so many occasions? It isn't so much that aspect of things that the media or indeed Labour spokespeople are fixating upon, but instead they are blaming the matter of Israel and Gaza and Labour's refusal to budge on their pro-Israel backing that is upsetting many people and influenced how they voted. I completely believe, and accept this is part of the story here in no small part, however, how it is being presented is appalling, with the implication being this is a Labour Muslim problem only, based upon the Muslim vote as a demographic, having spectacularly collapsed for Labour, Starmer having blown half the Muslim vote his party relied on, and frankly, since that news came out some time ago, I dare say the situation has probably got worse for Labour now. This has, on the other hand, unfortunately, allowed the media to lay the blame slowly on Muslim voters and presenting this as a Muslim-only problem, when it quite clearly isn't. So many more people are equally disgusted with Labour's Israel and Gaza stance than just Muslim voters. We're all horrified by what we're witnessing, why what our politicians keep doing and saying in relation to it, never choosing to stop arms sales, never choosing to condemn Netanyahu's regime and withdraw all support, always seemingly putting the blame on the people who are right now on the receiving end of the violence playing out in real time on our screens, on our phones, on social media. Of all politicians, it's really hard to suggest anyone who has caused more offence to those who want Israel censured and boycotted and divested from and sanctioned than Tel Aviv Keith has. I'm very clear. Israel must have that, does have that right to defend herself. Um, and Hamas bears responsibility. A siege is appropriate? Cutting off power? Cutting off water? Well, I think that Israel does have that right. It is an ongoing situation. Um, obviously, Everything should be done within international law, but I don't want to step away from the sort of core principles that Israel has a right to defend herself and Hamas bears responsibility for these terrorist acts. And I would call on all responsible states, particularly Middle East um, responsible states, to call this out for what it is um, and to stand with the world in condemning, utterly condemning, these actions by Hamas. That piece of LBC footage will never be forgiven and never be forgotten. And Starmer has only made worse that situation in the intervening time since because he has still refused to apologise for saying what he did there or even acknowledge he said what is clearly on film there. Cameras don't lie. Keir Starmer lies like a rug. Following that, of course, was the incident with the SNP ceasefire vote back in February. Sabotage as that was, aided it seemed by the speaker, willingly or coerced, we'll probably never know. But if it's the latter, having a PM in, St in Starmer, if he gets there, with control like that over the speaker, is unthinkable and certainly can't be democratic. It was a pro-Israel move that served nothing but Starmer's loyalties towards the Israel lobby, the same lobby that put him where he is today, backed as he was financially by figures eponymous with it, the likes of Trevor Chin of the Jewish Leadership Council to become Labour leader. With all of that baggage, both Israel-related, policy-related, and on his treatment of Labour members too, now he tells us, now it looks like his sure thing majority at the next general election might actually be in doubt, that he's going to listen to us finally. Are you really prepared to listen, Keith? But more importantly, believe anything he says to placate you and try and win back your vote from the point forwards given his already proven conduct? Is that how you're feeling in response to this message. You would have to be born yesterday to believe that, surely. It can never be about what Starmer says, but what Starmer does. And he would have to do a lot right now to convince us of a meaningful shift. I'm talking the dissolution of Labour Friends of Israel, for one. That would be a move that would make me sit up. I'm talking demands for the expulsion of the batshit Israeli ambassador to the UK, Zippy Hotovelli, as another, perhaps. I'm talking a reshuffle of his front bench to bring socialists on his back benches back to the front, what few remain, back into the fore to reshape policy and preferably bin off the likes of Rachel Reeves and West Streeting. 
I'm talking about restoring the whip to Diane Abbott immediately. Frankly, if Starmer were truly putting Labour and Labour values and the desire to see change as he claims his changed Labour is, I want to convince us of that. The single most important thing he could do right now is resign himself. Nothing, Keir Starmer says, will have the slightest impact on me because his words are worthless. His words mean nothing. He needs to show that he is listening, not to say it. And he needs to prove himself to the public now. And the extent to which I think he has to go to do that means it simply won't happen either. None of these things he will do. He will not change. He will just tell you he is. And more fool you if you still trust this man. Labour's actual realistic polling based on actual votes and not mathematical algorithms means that the likelihood of a hung parliament has increased. Sunak can't undo the damage he and his party have done in the eyes of the public and nor should they deserve to. And Keir Starmer really can't either. So bring on a hung parliament. Bring on the end of first past the post as the condition of any electoral deals to form a government. And let's end this circus of self-serving politicians bought and paid for by vested interests that never serve our interests. Made worse for Starmer, of course, has been the commentary from those Labour spokespeople on these results and the petty racism that has actually emerged. Showing not only has Starmer lied about all of the above, but those claims of dealing with racism in his party? Well, of course, they appear to be lies as well. As this video recommendation will tell you all about, I'll hopefully catch you on the next bit. Cheers, folks.